back on a, a quest to sort a problem out. Um, this is on a Phantom 1, which you obviously, this is what the Phantom 1 looks inside originally. Maybe a different color um, a NASA unit, but obviously the, the NASA units were very similar. But the only difference inside is obviously the workings and the software, basically. So this is what it originally looks like. So let me just quickly go over this to give you sort of the functionality on this. These these cables here, the M1, M2, M3, M4, will go to your e, your these ECS controller units, which controls the motor speeds. And these these ones, I can't remember what these ones go for. These actually go off. Um, I think the F2 and F3. I ain't got the layouts, but these are got go off somewhere else. But these are the main ones here, the motors. Now the important part here is you've got you got your LED light here, and you also got the expansion port. But this is your GPS cable. That's what gets gives you the GPS signal. That's the compass calibration cable. It goes down to the compass itself. Okay, the compass bit. So we, that stays connected. So don't change that. Just all we need to do is unplug this GPS cable. You've already got most of it done, so you you already got this part done. So um, the bit you've got done that I can see of is the power going from the um, GC GCU to back to the off taking off your battery. The um, PDU is off to the battery, which is fine. It's correct. You need to plug the expansion uh, cable on the right hand side of the PDU into the expansion port on the NASA. So on the yellow one here, it's marked up. It's in the, it's just in the same port basically, it just slots across the top here, that like you can see here. So that needs plugs into there. Then you plug the other um, canvas port back into your uh, GCU, which is fine, okay? And the last thing you need to do, which is the bit I think you're missing, is you need to take the GPS cable here and this has got to plug into the GPS port on here, because um, because it's because I was looking for where the GPS port is normally mounted on on the um, NASA. It actually is mounted on the expansion port um, originally, but because you're using the PDU on the expansion port, it has a pass through for uh, GPS here. So you need to take that cable, um, which is this one here, this cable here, and you need to plug it into the GPS port on the left hand side of the PDU unit. I've got a feeling the PDU unit on the left hand side is, is, is a different connector because originally when you buy the NASA, the upgraded NASA, it comes with its GPS uh, module which is the, uh, an external aerial which then you mount on a, long, uh, a proper aerial connector that sits on top of the quad. But in this case, because you're doing it to a Phantom, the Phantom has a GPS um, aerial already built into the lid so that's this that's basically what this is this is the cable so you so you need to i think you're going to need to recable this so it would fit this port here um i have not had a i can't see on your youtube channel the side of this to see what type of connection it is but that's where the gps ca cable's got to go plug it into there um and that's why you're not receiving or you're not getting the, uh, the signal properly um, but check your cabling against this because I can't understand why when you power it up it's not functioning correctly but you could try because from looking at this diagram it shows that the um, X3 port it takes the power from the NASA itself um, to power the PDU unit up but this this um, external power here is normally I think is, is extra so if you're finding at the moment because if very at the moment your phantom should fire up but have no GPS so what I would try to do is I would um, disconnect these two power connectors here from the PDU unit to see if it can draw power from the NASA unit itself because I've got a feeling that's the reason why it doesn't fire up because it does say if they're connected together that I'm assuming is correctly they will cause uh, the the NASA to keep constantly reboot, hence why it's not switching on. So what I will do is temporarily disconnect these two off to see if it takes a port from the X3 port, from the X3 port on the NASA. Because the NASA will have a separate um, power feed, because in the original, when you buy buy it, like, like as you can see in this illustration here, I think it gets the cable from this side here, which is the F2 port. So it's already getting power, it should be have enough power to supply the PDU unit itself. 
So what I would try and do is, um, well, it's two things you could probably do, is disconnect the X3 port, and then try to see if it powers on. Um, if it doesn't, re leave the XP X3 port connected, but dis just disconnect um, the power, the extra power connectors on this side, on the left-hand side, take them off, basically, and then see if the NASA gives the um, PDU unit its own power. If it does, then you should de then be able to get start the Phantom up on its own. But I think we need to look at this side GPS port here to see if it's if if this GPS cable regionally can just plug in. If it doesn't, it looks like you're gonna have to rewire it, and, and that's the other problem. So try those out, and uh, if not come back to me but what I need you to do is give me a, a proper picture a photograph of your NASA unit so I can see the cabling is going in which direction and the same with your NASA unit here and also I need to see the Zebus gimbal um, how the cables are connected so I need a nice top view or sort of nice photographs like this to see how it's arranged inside because it looks quite messy because in free the Phantom 1 you can do various things with it, but when it starts using newer units, it gets a bit more complex because they're not originally. I mean, the, the new NASA unit is, is originally to take this this uh, aerial connection here, or this new connection basically, which then will sit on top. But um, in theory, because you want to keep things tidy, and the Phantom already has a, a GPS cable, you need to modify this cable. But I know in the Phantom 2 Vision itself, this just all slides in. And connects fine because half of this is already inside in the gubbins on this anyway. Um, but because you've got the older one, it's a bit, little bit more difficult. But you're almost there, so it's just literally following these flow charts I've just shown you. Check where your GPS cable is because it should be plugged in. This should be plugged in anywhere on your unit apart from the side GPS port here. But when I looked at the video on YouTube, I couldn't see this section here connected to anything, hence why it's not receiving GPS. Um, and this um, export, uh, the ca uh, canvas port here, that should be directly plugged into the external port here. It shouldn't be tied up with this cable. So if you've got this cable um, somehow connected, um, combined with these, it's wrong. Because it, in theory, this is the, the pass-through port for GPS, so that's how it's got to be done. So try those things, see if it actually helps out anyway. Maybe we can establish um, a, a webcam link o over the internet so I can physically see live and um, then you can show me the camera around it and stuff like that um, but no I think this is it's quite I think it's quite simple to do so take a look at that I and mean, I brought up some other, di other diagrams to show how this is all connected in so you can see this is for a quadcopter so if you had a, uh, like a quadcopter completely different from Phantom it just shows you how the NASA is, is used on other things because NASA not just is on DJI products they actually use them on all sorts of stuff now you know helicopters quadcopters hexacopters and stuff because the NASA unit is quite good it will it'll do anything from uh, a two bladed or one bladed uh, right up to six or, or eight basically and it does it in different configurations as well. You can do it it's like a 3-3 three, three, um, tricopter and things like that. But this just gives you just sort of an illustration how it connected because it's a very similar connection. Because um, if not using, um, if you wasn't using the, um, how we call it, the uh, Zebu Skimble basically, you can actually use uh, I, um, IOSD on it, which allows you to take all the statistic information on here and throws it onto your uh, video re transmitter receiver. So you can see like altitude and all those sorts of statistics. I know you can add this function to your NASA here because you can buy another little unit that actually splits the canvas controller here, allowing you to have the IOSD, I, I think. And there's ZBS again, boy. It actually might be on the ISD actually, where you've got that plugged in. Then you can then take the ZBS gimbal canvas port and it'll plug it into that side bit there. Yeah, so it's already on the ISD. Then that'll give you all your stats, statistics, fly altitude straight onto an on screen. So if you're transmitting the camera on your GoPro directly down uh, uh, via video link this will give you all the on-screen stuff basically so just this is another illustration to show how it's using in other things as well just to give you an idea hopefully that will actually uh, sort your problem out if it does let me know because I'll be interested to know if I didn't actually nail it on the head it's very difficult because I haven't got a phantom one in front of me to be able to sort of look at how it how it's done and stuff so it's, I'm a little bit blind on it but I think I've worked it out so let me know and uh, let me know how you get on um, speak to you soon cheers Bye.